Tonight on Nightstand... We play Illegal Alien Star Search. Let's start the competition off with a little nookie. I love this country! One lucky immigrant is going to win a green card. And we say some water after the living expectant. Kato Kalen. Then, if I say I'm a whore, I'm a whore! Teenage hard body prostitutes. These tricks are not for kids. Comedy just doesn't get any more better. And now, your host for Nightstand, Dick Dietrich! Thank you. Very nice. Thank you. You know, there's an old slogan that the Statue of Liberty is fond of saying. It goes, give me your tired, your bored, your muddled masses yearning to breed freely. <laughs> yes, Lady Luck once welcomed foreigners to this country, but now with anti-immigration movements like California's Preparation 187, <laughs> we're closing our borders and saying to these people, no mas. Dung da qua. Jing da wang. And of course, get out and stay out. <laughs> Is this closed door policy right? Our first guest says no. Eight years ago, she snuck into this country to pursue her lifelong dream of becoming an entertainer. Please welcome Nookie Lee Jones. Hello, America. I love this country. All right. Why do you want to come to America? Because, Dick, life very hard in my country. Mm -hmm. And what exactly is your country? Oh, uh, originally, I'm from North Vietnam, Dick. Yes, of course. We fought against each other in the Korean War. <laughs> now, uh, what was your first uh, experience with American pop culture? Was it drinking Coca-Cola, watching American movies, listening to American music? No. It was American G.I. blow up my village. Uh... It's okay, though, because I soon hear about America from all G.I. to come to where I live in Kwangfei Valley. Ooh, that makes you a valley girl. <laughs> Forgive me, that's a little American humor at your expense. That's okay, Dick. I understand American humor very well. When I was a little girl, Bob Hope used to come to my village. Ooh. But the American words I learned were, Hey, I want to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so you came to America, but once you got here, Nookie Lee, it was not easy street, was it? No. Once I get here, I no can find work as singer. Sorry, you need green card. Sorry, you need green card. Finally, I take job working in sweatshop. Ooh. Now, for those of you who don't know, a sweatshop is a place where illegal aliens work making... Sweatshirts, sweatpants, and sweaters. I think, why me? Why me? I no want much. I no take welfare. I no take food stamp. Why not Yankee government give me green card so I can live in Las Vegas and be like Raja Maneri with a Z? Ooh, hey. Well, you tell a compelling story, Miss Nookie Lee. And, uh, sir, what do you think about what do you think about her story? Well, uh, I have sympathy for her, Dick. But the bottom line is, she's here illegally, and she should be deported. Okay. And what? Uh, well, uh, what is your name? What do you do, sir? Uh, Colin Brown, and I'm the field director for the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Ooh, the INS is here tonight, huh? Yeah. And I mean, I feel sorry for her plight, but. She is here illegally. She should be sent back. Yeah, but if it weren't for illegal alien, who would bust table or clean the house or mow the lawn? Ooh, well, she's right, Colin. Without foreigners, there'd be no Chinatowns, no Koreatowns, no Little Italys. Only Americans would be living in bad sections of town. <laughs> look, look, I have nothing against all foreigners. I mean, for all I care, Nookie could be a $35 an hour call girl or a or a bank robber or a serial killer, I don't care, as long as she's here legally. Ooh, well, folks, as you can see, this is a volatile issue that would normally make for a boring show. <laughs> but tonight, we're going to have our guest aliens perform for you. The winner will receive a green card we happen to have. Unfortunately, the three non-winners will be immediately deported. <laughs> Audience, what do you say? You're responsible enough to handle this? Yeah. So let's start the competition off with a little Nookie, huh? <laughs> nookie, what are you going to do for us? Oh, Dick, I'm going to sing a song called Tum Gum Guy. What is that, Some Gum Guy? No, Dick, Tum Gum Guy. It's a very beautiful story, Dick. It's about a little girl. 
She go for a walk in woods one day. Uh-oh, did a big bad wolf jump out and scare her? No, oh, Dick, that's Tom Gum Goo. <laughs> Tom Gum Guy, big dragon jump out. But little girl not so scared. Instead, she say, hey, dragon, I'm very hungry. So, dragon, take her home and make her lunch. Paper wrap chicken, spicy string beans. But hey, I want to tell ya. <laughs> hey, Nookie, why don't you just sing that song and take us in the commercial? How about it, folks? Uh, yeah. You got it, Dick. All right. ahead of us. Go, Nookie, go! Okay. Have you ever used a bathroom after Rush Limbaugh? We want to hear your story. Give us a call. On an unfinished nightstand, he talked kinky sex to her over the internet. And now, he's going to meet his computer lover for the very first time. Mom? It's love at first megabyte. Only on Nightstand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're back with Nightstand's illegal alien star search. And I've asked INS field director Colin Brown to join Nookie on the panel. Okay. Remember tonight, one lucky immigrant is going to win a green card while the three losers will be deported on the first train overseas. Uh, that's the game. Okay. Our next contestant came to this country seeking a career in the movies, but you're more likely to have seen his face driving a cab or making you a Slurpee. Please welcome Lak Shlavanan Queen Badardashi. Lak Shlavanan, welcome to the show. Thank you. You are a badass dude for having me here. Thank uh, you. <laughs> that's very kind of you. Thank you. Now, uh, uh, Lako, you came to America, but before you came here, wh where did you live? I, I am from Bangladesh, Dick. You ever been there, Dick? Uh, no, but I saw the concert by George Harrison. <laughs> um, and what, what did you do there in Bangladesh? I was a movie actor. Ooh. Bangladesh, number one star in 1988. Wow. How about it? Number one star, you must have made a lot of money. Over 26 billion bougies a dead year alone. Wow. Hey, that's a lot of bougies. How much is that in American? 162 bucks. <laughs> that's why I am dying to come to the USA. Because I know if I make it here, I'll make it anywhere. It's up to you, New York, New York. <laughs> All right. Now, Mr. Colin Brown... How about it? Even you must be moved by Locko's story of determination. Come on, Dick. Stories like his are a hundred thousand bougies a dozen. Well, maybe, but you haven't seen his acting talent yet. So uh, I understand you're going to do some, some of your favorite scenes from some of your favorite movies for us? That's right, Dick. Since I learned all my very good English from great American film classic, I would like to do my favorite scenes from my favorite movies. Okay, well, folks, give it up for Locko. I would like to do my all-time number one favorite, Mr. Joe Pesci in Goodfellas. Uh. You think I'm funny? No, you just said that I am funny. You think I'm some kind of freaking clown to make you laugh? You tell me why I am funny. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, and now, now, for a complete change of pace, I would like to do my all-time number one favorite, Mr. Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver. <laughs> You're talking to me. <laughs> Are 
you talking to me? You must be talking to me because there's nobody else here. <laughs> Laco, we got time for one more. Who you, who's it going to be? Okay, now is my all-time number one favorite, <laughs> Mr. Jim Carrey in As Ventura Pet Detective. Oh. <laughs> ask you, me. I need to ask you some question. May I bother you with some mint or binaca? I'm going to stink the place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Very much. Okay, coming up, more illegal alien star search with a Scandinavian beauty who gets paid to lie down on the job. Stay tuned. <laughs> on the next nightstand... I say I'm a whore, I'm a what? Teenage hard body prostitutes. These tricks are not for kids. Get hooked on hookers. All this and more on the second half hour of Nightstand with me, Dick Dietrich, the comedy that makes fun of talk. We are back. We're back with Illegal Alien Star Search. Our next guest comes to us from behind the green door of Copenhagen. Oh, ooh. She, too, has a goal of legally working in America. Please welcome Xenophoba. <laughs> Xenophoba. Xenophoba, welcome. Oh, thank you. Being here is a big, good dream for me. Oh, well, it's a quite a big dream for me, too. I was just thinking... I was just thinking that in your country, Danish means people. In our country, Danish is something I like to eat. Oh, no, no, people. People. So, uh, why do you want to come to our country? Well, I want to uh, come here because for what I do, America is the place to be for a lot of work. I want to work, work, work. Oh, very good. And, uh, and what, is it you, what is it you do? I'm a pornographic movie star. Ooh. Porn star. Porn star, that makes her twice as illegal. Twice illegal? Why do you say that? Because she's here illegally and what she does is illegal. Oh. In my country, pornography is considered an art. It's respected profession, like being a doctor or a lawyer in your country. Well, doctors maybe. Um, I see this man, uh, this lady shaking your head, ma'am. Do you want to say something about this? Yeah, uh, I'm thinking that she should go back to where she came from. Obviously, she doesn't know American values and what Americans think and feel. Okay, honey? Oh. And, and what is it you do? I'm an American porn star. Oh. Kitty Latour. Uh -huh. And this no-talent bimbo is taking the work right out of my mouth. Must be tough for you to swallow. Dick, I am a hardly no talent. I've worked with all the top Danish actors. <laughs> American porno actresses are the best, okay? USA! Yeah. USA! Okay, okay, okay. Okay, let's calm down. Let's hear how let's let's hear how xenophobe is gonna respond to that. I have a more talent in my little pinky than you have in your whole body. <laughs> oh. Okay, that's it. I'm coming after you. Oh, oh no, wait, wait, no, wait, come on. Hey, wait. Whoa, don't do it. Whoa, come on, don't do it. Whoa, don't do that. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Okay, come on, Kitty, back to your seat. Oh, come on, right me. back there. <laughs> Boy, if they'd only learn to fight like that in the Middle East. <laughs> now, uh, Xenophobe, uh, Miller tells me that one of your most popular films is a film called Schwende Korsen Upsen. Mm -hmm. uh, what, uh, what's that mean in English? The sound of boy always rings it twice. Whoa. Well, folks, as a showcase for Xenophobe's talents, we have filmed a PG-13 rated version of The Sauna Boy Always Rings Twice in English. 
and see if you can recognize the sauna boy in his film debut. Hmm. Perhaps my customer is not home. You must be the sauna boy. I am the sauna boy. I'm sorry I'm late. Traffic was very heavy on the Autobahn. Well, don't they just stand there. Come in and fix my sauna. Would you like another vodka drink? Absolutely, but seven is my limit. <laughs> You're a funny sauna boy. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, sauna boy, are you good with your tools? Most of my customers say I'm the best. Well, let's see what you've got. I'm sorry I got started without you. If it were up to me, she'd have my green card and my gold card. <laughs> up next, our final illegal alien contestant. Plus, we'll talk to boat people. There's a whole shipload of them out there. <laughs> Stick around. We're back with our final segment of Nightstand's Illegal Alien Star Search. Now, our fourth contestant, Manuel Guitares, a 43-year-old busboy and crooner from Oaxaca, Mexico, was just escorted from the green room by government authorities to pick up his earnings from the state lottery he just won. How about it, huh? So this means, this means we need an illegal alien to fill our fourth segment. Are there any talented illegal aliens in our audience tonight? Okay, are there any legal aliens here tonight? Yeah, here's one right up uh, here. You just are right, where are you from? Uh, from here, but uh, my cousin's from Germany. Oh, really? Well, uh, guten plenty to you, sir. <laughs> I don't speak any English, but uh, he is a very famous comedian in Germany and Argentina. Oh, Germany and Argentina. Wow, would, uh, would he like to perform? I don't know. Let me ask. Hey, Günther, der Schnitzelkopf will, dass du dein Glockenspiel und dein Disco Baby vorführst. Willst du das machen? Wir sind ein paar andere Säden. Ja? Well, he said, yeah, he'd like that. Oh, really? That's, well, come on down here. What's his, what's, uh, what's his name? Gunther Johan. Gunther Johan. Okay, here he is, folks. Give it up for the funniest man in Germany, Gunther Johan. Danke, danke schön. Wie sieht es aus für Gunther Johan? Wie sieht es aus für Gunther Johan? Wie sieht es aus für Gunther Johan? Kato Kalen? Wie sieht es auf Impression, wie sehen? Sie suchen Bart Impression? Ja, ja. Yeah, yeah. Sehr gut. Der ganze amerikanische Kameraker, Jack Benny. Jack Benny. <laughs> Nun, Rochester, ich will nicht runterkommen. Aha! Sie sagt, der ganze Herr Macho. The top banana meet the film Flying Tigers. Look out of his way. Here he is coming. John Wayne, look out. I still leaving, Poppy. The flunk under depth perception examiner. The Vilnik Dwarfen met their flying tiger. Dog out. Meine Favorite ist Jack Nicholson und der Film Chinatown. Jack Nicholson. <coughs> In Schildegen, Sie Frau Mulray. <laughs> Wo bist du intercourse and mit du Vater? <laughs> der will nicht deine Pregnancy mit du Sister Robin. Oh! Good, good for Johan, everybody. 
everybody. Wow, that was wonderful. But according to the rules now, we have to choose who's going to get the one green card. You know, Colin, I'm just thinking, there got to be three extra green cards hanging around somewhere. Can't we help all these people? No. What do you say? Plenty new to port, they can all stay. All right. All right. That's the spirit. Welcome to our winner. Give them another hand. They're all staying. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Well, folks, oh boy, we let some more foreigners in tonight. Some might say that's exactly what we can't do. Others are saying, ah, what the hell? <laughs> My point is this these people didn't come here tonight to become dishwashers or gardeners or nannies. They came here to be entertainers, and that makes them special. So if you're standing on that border tonight and you're thinking about crawling under that fence, <laughs> ask yourself, do I have an act? Because <laughs> if you don't, you may want to practice before you come to America. <laughs> For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. Hey, nightstand isn't over yet. Take a look at this. Tonight on Nightstand, in response to accusations that we exploit sex and ignore important social issues, we bring you the first in our new Save Our Kids series. Tonight's installment, Teenage Hard Body Prostitutes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. You know, last night I was driving home and I spotted a young girl in a street corner wearing a very short skirt, a low-cut blouse, and a wonder bra. <laughs> Yet something about her caught my eye. I pulled over and was shocked to learn that she was a teenage hard-body prostitute. She's agreed uh, to join us tonight at 80% of her normal rate. <laughs> Folks, you want to meet Crystal? Welcome to the show, Crystal. Now, Crystal's not your real name, but it should be. Um, I mean, Crystal, people are looking at you. They've got to be wondering how a pretty girl like you with a killer body ends up on the streets of hard luck land. How long have you been hooking? I've been on the streets for about a month now. A month? But aren't you scared? Aren't you lonely? I, I can see you're cold. I survive. I survive. Two words. How poignant in there poignancy. I understand you're from the Midwest. Which part? Seattle. America's heartland. So you left the land of waving wheat and tall corn to run away to here. Why? I couldn't stand being around my parents anymore. Mom was always ripped, totally blitzed on her butt 24 hours a day. You know, Crystal, I'm just wondering, maybe she had a drinking problem. My parents have lots of problems. Mom would always bring all her boyfriends over to the house, and it made Dad really mad. Uh-huh. And he would take it out on you? He liked to spank me. Penny for my thoughts. So you see, I had no choice. I had to leave. That's where you're wrong, Crystal. Choices are like belly buttons. Everybody has one. And maybe you made the wrong choice by leaving home. Maybe your family loves you a lot more than you realize. Isn't that right, Mrs. Crystal's mother? Deborah? Oh my God. Deborah, are you there? Uh, uh, Mrs. Shattuck, would you call Deborah Crystal? We're trying to protect her identity. Gabby, please come home. We miss you, honey. Everybody wants to know how you doing. I'm not coming home, Ma. Then can you send some money? Thank, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Shattuck, for that telling call. Okay, Crystal, maybe you couldn't go back home, but did you have to come here to Hollywood, uh, you know... Couldn't you stay with somebody else, a family member, a friend, a hometown whorehouse? No, no. I don't have anybody except my brother, Skip. Uh -huh. He was the only one who was ever nice to me. You know, but when things got really bad, he left too. Uh, have you heard from him? Well, I saw him last month on Geraldo and the month before that on Sally Jesse. Well, at least you get to see him occasionally. But, you know, enough of this family stuff. Uh, how'd you get into prostitution? When I first got out here, I tried some acting, but that didn't work. 
So I guess after a while I just got desperate. That's great. Do you ever try any acting? <laughs> yes, like I said, it didn't work out. I mean, what was I supposed to do? I don't have a job. I can't act. I didn't have a choice. That's where you're wrong, Chrissy. Choices are like nipples. Everybody has at least one. <laughs> and you made the right choice by being here tonight. Because we're going to show you the gritty realities of prostitution. The human tragedy, the personal toll. Plus, this sizzling MTV-like video that you kids are really going to dig. Stick around. <laughs> A week from a month ago Sunday on Nightstand, plastic surgery nightmares. I vow that the butcher who did this to you will pay for this atrocity, for taking a normal face and mutilating it beyond all recognition. Dick, I am the surgeon. <laughs> well, I knew that. Only on Nightstand. Okay, we're back with our penetrating discussion on teenage hard body prostitutes. Yeah, you have a question, sir. Yes, for Crystal. My name is Benny. I hate to admit it, but I'm addicted to prostitutes. Well, that's very, that's very brave of you to admit that, Benny. What, what's your question for Crystal? How much? We'll save that for later. Uh, my next guest not only helps hundreds of young wayward girls, she also arrests them on a regular basis. She's an undercover policewoman. Please welcome my new best friend, Detective Molly Bolt. <laughs> welcome to the show, Detective Bolt. You can call me Molly. <laughs> That's a 10-4, Molly. Uh, you know, I can't believe how different you look from the other night when we saw you on duty. Uh, we've got a picture of you on duty. Don't we, Miller? Can you put that on the screen? Right there. Now, we blackened out your eyes to protect your identity. Uh, but I'm sure that outfit must have fooled a lot of unsuspecting horny men. The black miniskirt, the whole bit. Don't, don't you feel sleazy? As far as I'm concerned, it's just another uniform. <laughs> but the skirt is so short. Aren't you afraid men will see your shield? Oh, oh no, people. No, 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 no. I put it in my purse, Dick. You put it in purse. Interesting. But, Detective Molly, uh, I, I look at you, I see you're a pretty woman, an intelligent woman. Why would somebody like you want to be an undercover vice cop? Well, Dick, let me tell you a little story. It's about a uh, teenage runaway who took to the streets and became a prostitute. And then she uh, was on her way to a, an early grave when somebody reached out and helped her. Then she went back to school. She turned her life around. And now she's giving back to society by helping other misguided hookers by becoming an undercover vice cop. <laughs> What a great story. I'd like to book her on the show sometime. <laughs> but uh, this, this, this undercover stuff, how does it work out there? Are you by yourself? Are you with a partner? What goes on? Well, actually, Dick, we work in teams. I have a backup that watches my back until a trick comes up and pays for sex, uh, just the way you did with Crystal. You mean when I was giving her cab fare so she could start her life over again? <laughs> Now, you mentioned the word uh, trick. Some people in our audience may not be familiar with that word. What, what is a trick? Okay, a trick could be the person who buys sex, or it could be the actual sex act itself, as in turning a trick. So these tricks are not for kids. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, Molly. I thought it was time to add comedy to the structure. Um, but let's talk about Crystal. You know her, right? Oh, yes. Crystal is a typical story. Um, dysfunctional family, low self-esteem. Hey, 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 you do not know me. <laughs> You're wrong, Crystal. I know you too well. I was there. And where is that, Detective Molly? <laughs> On the streets, Dick. No, honey, you have not been anywhere. You're just some cop who thinks she's hot. <laughs> So just go ahead and spare me the details about your screwed up childhood. She is so confused, Dick. Oh. <laughs> I'll say she thought that story was about you. I mean, 
Who died and made you queen of the streets anyway? Crystal, I'm not the enemy. I just don't want to see you letting your body be defiled by disgusting, horny, middle-aged men like, like him. Hey, hey, as soon as they hand over the green, they all turn to Brad. Um, which gives me an idea. Uh, uh, Officer Molly, could we play act something? Maybe we'll be able to scare Crystal straight. So come on down here. Okay. I want you to be Crystal. All right. I'll be Officer Dick. And, uh, and, and let's, let's do one of these scenarios, okay? Okay. You might want to just unbutton your blouse a little, just to bring ambiance. Okay? And uh -oh. you, you're there. What, what, what do I do? Very good. Uh, you would walk towards me, mm -hmm. and I might uh, undress you with my eyes. Okay. Something like this. And then uh, I would say something like, Hi, cutie. My name's Crystal. Who are you? Hello, young prostitute. <laughs> I'm a businessman from out of town. Mmm. Looking for a good time? Uh-huh. I'm always looking for a good time. Especially when my wife and kids are at home and I'm a businessman from out of town looking for a good time. <laughs> well, I'll be your playground for only a hundred dollars. What do I get for fifty dollars? Anything you want, you stud muffin. All right, sister, that's it. You're under arrest. Anything you say to a lawyer or a bailiff can be used against you. If that bailiff so speaks his mind, then you don't have any rights. Do you understand your rights? I understand them. Now take off the cuffs, Dick. Why? I can't Why? move. Why? They hurt. I bet they hurt a bit. Demonstration's like you, don't over, they? Dick. Yeah, I don't think it is. Take I off the cuffs, Dick. Take off the cuffs. Dick, take off the cuffs. <laughs> Those acting classes with Scott Bayo have really paid off. <laughs> well, when we come back, we'll continue our discussion of prostitution, and Miller gets a Joey Buttafuoco makeover. So stick around. Hi. Do you believe that Mount Rushmore is a natural phenomenon? Well, it's not. On some upcoming nightstand, it's great diarrhea stories. Let me get this straight. You're performing in Swan Lake. You had a double latte before the show. Your stomach starts to turn. You start to perspire. You make your leap. Then what happens? Find out on Nightstand. Thank you, we're back, and we're talking to real-life prostitutes who also work as prostitutes. <laughs> My next guest is one of the most successful sex service industry entrepreneurs, and the author of this book, There's No Business Like Ho Business. <laughs> Please welcome call girl extraordinaire Tracy Ann Hepburn. Ann, I did not read the book, but I did listen to the book tape as read by Tipper Gore. <laughs> and uh, uh, I noticed that you never refer to yourself as a prostitute. No, Dick. I prefer the term pleasure technician. <laughs> pleasure technician. Interesting. So you're not the basic sleazy girl in a corner, negotiate and haggle about a price, then go up to her room and do it while her boyfriend waits in the hall kind of an operation? No, Dick, we're not. That's so many of us are familiar with. No. What are you and how'd you get there? Let me tell you a little story, Dick. It's about a young street hooker who quickly learned how to make her customers feel special. And then she spread into ancillary lines of clothing, a pimp referral service, and an erotic catalog of adult toys. And now that woman runs the most successful sex provider service in the world. <laughs> Miller, why aren't we booking these people? Uh, you mentioned other businesses. I happen to have your, uh, your new catalog here called Sex Fifth Avenue. Um, I've been looking through it. It's uh, got some great stuff. I've been looking for a pair of chaps. And uh, little silver golf balls. What a great gift idea. Uh, excuse me. Dick, what is this? Some sort of nymphomercial? I mean, I'm hearing words like um, pleasure technician and sex provider service. I mean, you make it sound like a career day at a high school. Being a call girl is a career. <laughs> it's a great way to network with politicians, evangelists, celebrities. And if you're interested in acting, 
We could always hook you up with Charlie Sheen. <laughs> really? Oh, I could meet Charlie Sheen? No. Absolutely. Crystal, listen to me. Don't listen to her. This no-class hooker represents everything that's wrong with society. I mean, she'd do anything for a buck. Well, I'm sure it's a lot more than a buck, right, Tracy? <laughs> Don't listen to Officer Frigid, Crystal. The only reason she's not out on the streets anymore is because she couldn't make any money at it. <laughs> Honey, I could make more money than you any night. Just because you look like a whore doesn't make you a whore. Don't tell me what I am. If I say I'm a whore, I'm a whore. I have more whore in my little finger than you have in your Shut up, you Shut up, you whore! Hey, 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 hey! Ladies, ladies, ladies! Watch your language. There's an innocent young prostitute here. Dick, Dick, come on. Dick, this is insane. This lady is trivializing an important issue here. You and all the rest of the media are glamorizing a, a, a sordid, pathetic lifestyle. Okay, you make a very good point, and I'm going to think about that. <laughs> Coming up, hot hooker lingerie. <laughs> Everything she needs to wear, or should I say, take off. That's good writing, Miller. Be right back. On the next nightstand... How do you keep those swimsuits from riding up your rear end? We're looking at the ugly side of beauty. You stole my crown by playing hide the scepter with the judge. Hey, hey, Tex! Don't ever stop a fight on my show. Then we play America's newest game, The Race Card. Martin Sheen, Charlie Sheen, or Afro Sheen. See Myth America and My Kid's a Race Trader. All this and more next week on Nightstand with me, Dick Dietrich, the comedy that makes fun of talk. We're back. We're back. The topic is prostitution, and we're having a ball. And we also have a we have a question for Tracy, I believe. Yes. Um, I have a two-part question. First, is it true that you do anything for John except kiss him on the lips, and that you say for the man you love? And second, what's the cowgirl position? <laughs> well, in answer to the first part of your question, You've been watching too many movies. And I don't know what the cowgirl position is. Uh, Dick, the cowgirl position <laughs> is when the woman straddles the man, puts her in his and up and down like a wild bronco. Thank you. Wow. You guys really know your stuff. Now, before the break, uh, uh, Molly, you made some points about exploiting prostitution and glamorizing prostitution, and I agree with you. And this next piece of film we're about to show is a shameful example of that. Miller, would you roll the hooker fashion show? <laughs> Christiane, what do we have here? Well, Dick, the theme this year is freedom, individuality, styles that say, look at me, I'm a slut. <laughs> the fabrics are durable, wearable, stretchy, wrinkle-free, mm -hmm. perfect for anonymous sex with strangers, shriners, and my personal favorite conventioneer. <laughs> Hello, I'm. Yeah, yes. she knows badges. <laughs> Trashy yet classy, looks whimsically whorish. Ooh, nice leather we're having. And the best thing is, it fits like a condom. <laughs> and there she goes. Is, it fits like a condom. <laughs> and there she goes off onto the sunset. Mm -hmm. How about it? Those clothes were so killer. How can I get some? I can fax you a list of designers, honey, that will knock your socks Crystal, off. Crystal, you don't want these. You know where this can lead. Well, yeah, but see, I... Dick, see what happens when you show something like the fashion video? Oh, why don't you just shut up and let her make her own decision? No, why don't you just shut up, you whore? Well, I've had just about enough of this out of you. Shut up! Just because I'm a success! I said shut up! Hey, 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 hey! You two knock it off as much as I'd love to see the two of you chew each other out. We gotta move on. Oh, people, no! Now, Crystal, before you decide which way to go, we have a surprise voice we think you'd like to hear. Mystery voice, say something. Crystal, uh, 
you and I have always been closer than anyone. Uh, people have always called us two peas in a pod because we're so much alike. Crystal, do you recognize that voice? No, I'm sorry, I don't. <laughs> okay, uh, mystery voice, can you say something else? Uh, we grew up in the same house. <laughs> Crystal, uh, we're running out of time, mystery voice. Can you give her a better clue? I'm your brother. <laughs> Crystal? Is it my brother, Skip? Good guess, Crystal! <laughs> Are you, are you surprised, Crystal? <laughs> Am I ever? <laughs> oh, Skippy, I can't believe that you're here. <laughs> well, Crystal, your brother didn't fly all this way at his expense just to say hi. <laughs> he has something he wants to ask you. What is it, Skip? <sighs> Crystal, I want you to come home. Oh. No way. I know you weren't happy back home and stuff, but things have changed. They'll never change, Crystal. She's right, you know. I'm never going to live with those people again, no, never. Wait, just listen to him, Crystal. Aren't you tired of having sex with middle-aged guys? <laughs> well, it's, it's better than someone yelling at me all day. Look, you don't have to go back to Ma's place. I got my own place. You can live with me. Crystal, you could stop running. You could go back to school. You could be a cheerleader at a Catholic girls' school. I, I don't know. I just, I, I just, I just don't want anyone yelling at me. You know. I'll never yell at you, Crystal. Crystal, please come home. We can be as close as we once were. I'm your brother. I love you. Oh. I love you too, Skip. <laughs> Well, there you have it. Lights, please. Folks, we brought another family together tonight. Sure, we threw in some exploitive sex to make it interesting and get over the slow message spots. But the real message tonight was that what kids need now more than ever is the unconditional love and support of family. Feeling and being one. Because without it, more and more girls are going to into crystals and turn to prostitution and in the end we're all going to pay for it. For now, I'm Dick Dietrich. See you next time. Huh?